Chemistry teachers will often teach you that cations are positive, anions are negative, and they'll come up with some mnemonic to help you remember what they are. Maybe they'll say cations are positive because pussy cats or something. And then the students often get confused and think that the prefix cat means positive and the prefix an means negative. So then they struggle with the idea of what an anode and a cathode is. And then maybe the chemist will tell them, ah, right, OK, well, the cathode is positive because... Uh, sorry, cathode is negative because the cation's attracted to it, or, or something like that. Well, actually, cathodes could be positive or negative. Anodes could be positive or negative. So we need to clear up the etymology of cathode, anode, cation and anion to really understand what's going on here. And it all starts from a conversation between Michael Faraday and William Huell. Now, these two were trying to figure out a convention for the relationship between current and magnetic fields in chemical reactions that took place within some sort of electrolyte. The usual sort of electrolysis, where you have two different metals in some sort of electrolyte, maybe an acid, chemical reactions take place, and there is a flow of charge. And there was a magnetic field around this. Now, what Michael Faraday proposed was this. He said, well, let's use the same convention as we see on Earth. Now, at the time, it was known <clears throat> that there was a magnetic field around the Earth, and it was understood that the magnetic field pointed in the direction of the North Pole, geographic North Pole, and away from the direction of the geographic South Pole for the Earth. And that is because small plotting compasses found their North Pole pointing to the geographic north, hence the name. But that means that the geographic north pole is in fact a magnetic south pole, and the geographic south pole is in fact a magnetic north pole, from a physics perspective. Now, it was also known, uh, thanks to the work with Ersted and others, that you could produce a magnetic field with this shape if you had a flow of charge. And it was perceived that positive charge flowing around the Earth in this direction from east to west, would produce a magnetic field. And if you use your right-hand grip rule, that does check out. If you take your right hand and you place it in a grip like this, uh, the current going across the top of this picture here, from left to right, the thumb points down, indicating the magnetic field going down through the middle and then out round the edges. So the right-hand grip rule can be used to determine the direction of this current. And it was believed at the time that there was a magnetic field on the Earth because there were these electric currents swirling around inside the Earth around in this direction, perpendicular to the poles, to the axis. So these positive charges, which was how current was perceived to flow at the time, were seen to be flowing from east to west. So within the electrochemistry of one of those um, electro electrolysis cells, it was thought, well, maybe we could describe it as um, some sort of flow of positive charge from east to west. So let's call the bit over at the west, the, the west ode, and the bit over here at the east, the east ode. So let's break that word down for a second. Where does the ode part come from? The ode part comes from Greek. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce Greek, but effectively the word ode, or the suffix ode, means way. So the east way over here and the west way over here. Um, it was then thought, well, that's not going to work if we start switching around the charge. If, for example, it's a negative charge that is responsible for current, and it turns out that in electrical circuits that is in fact the case, but within electrolysis it's both types of charge moving. So there needs to be a slightly more robust way. Uh, the idea of labelling north, south, east and west had some sort of consistency and logic to it, uh, but there needs to be a more generalised way of looking at this. So the particle that headed from east to west, this positive particle heading from, from east to west, it, it was visualised to be like the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. So as this particle rises in the east, it goes up the sky, an up-going direction. And as it moves around here and then heads towards the west, it goes down in the sky. So rather than saying east way and west way, it started being called 
up way and down way. So this part over here became the up way, and this part over here became the down way. Well, the Greek for up is anos, or anus, or something like that. I'm not very good at Greek, but an, ode, became the up way, and cat, or cath, ode, became the down way from katas. So what we've now got is this uh, is the definition of anode and cathode in terms of the movement of the sun perceived from the surface of the earth. Now, bear in mind that all of this discussion was going on before even John Dalton's um, atomic model was confirmed. The, the electron had not been discovered yet. That wouldn't be discovered for quite a few years. So so this is all going on before certain key discoveries, and they needed a convention within electrochemistry. So we've now got an anode and we've got a cathode. So what about this positive particle? Well, it's not so much to do with the charge when it was defined. It was simply the idea that whatever it is that moves uh, towards the down way, we'll call the down go. So the word ion is from the Greek, which means go. So this... Uh, they're called ions because they drift through these solutions. Uh, this thing here was called the down go because it was heading towards the down way. So we could now call that the cat ion. Uh, so positive charge in this case is a cat, oops, I spelt it wrong, cat ion. And so a particle that was heading towards the up way, we would call the up go, also known as the an. Ion. So do you see, it's, it's to do with the direction that it flows rather than the charge. Now, it turns out that cations are always going to be positive and anions are always going to be negative. That is a fact. But cathodes and anodes are not necessarily um, positively charged and negatively charged. So we could set up a situation, for example, where we have two electrodes, and let's have this one as positive and this one as negative, and in that case, a positive charge is indeed going to be going down or towards the down way. Remember that this over here, this is the down way, also known as the cathode. This is the up way, and so this positive charge is going to be a down-go particle or a cation down go. Um, cat ion. So this is going to be a cathode. That's fine. But is it possible to produce the same sort of picture with two electrodes where one of them is not negative? Well, absolutely it is. If, for example, I have an incredibly positive terminal and a less positive terminal. Now, in that case, a positive charge is still going to head in this direction. It's still going to be positive, yes. It's still going to be going down. It's still going to be going towards this way here. Whatever way this one goes, that direction it goes towards, we can call the down way. So this becomes the down way, because that's the direction the cation is going, and the cation is the down-go particle. So this becomes the down way, and therefore we can call this a cathode. But look, it's positive, and this is your anode. And it is absolutely possible, of course, to do the same thing, where this is a <coughs> negative charge, and this is a much more negative charge, or a terminal, should I say. And in this case, you take your positive particle, and yes, this is a cation, and it's going down. It's a down-go particle, which means this is the down way, which means this is a negative cathode, fine, but this one is a negative anode. Now, modern day, we can talk about this in terms of electric potential. And we can say that this here is at a higher potential than this one here. So we can say V1 is greater than V2. And we could do the same thing here. V1, V2, V1 is greater than V2. And we could do the same thing over here. V1 is greater than V2, where this is V1 and this is V2. Now, OK, these two are negative, but if I draw a number line, this is further down the number line. So although the magnitudes may not quite play out this way, if you take into account the sign of the potential, then we still have this being a higher potential than that. 
Okay, this is a higher magnitude of potential, but on the number line, this is closer to infinity positive, this is closer to infinity negative. So we can still say that this is true. So we can define in modern terms whether something is an anode or a cathode in terms of the electric potential. But that wasn't always the way. We used to define it in terms of the direction of the movement of the sun and considering what a uh, the part, positive particle, because that was what was believed to flow for there to be current, moving in the same direction as the sun moves over the Earth in order to produce the magnetic field that we know we can measure around the Earth. What if, of course, Benjamin Franklin had decided that amber charged positively and glass charged negatively? Benjamin Franklin, if you recall, defined the two materials as charging uh, in the way that they, he did, so glass charges positively and, uh, and amber charges negatively, which is why we call electrons what we call them. It's from the Greek electron, which means amber. So it's because of Benjamin Franklin that we have negatively charged particles flowing in a wire being responsible for the current, and we talk about conventional current being in the opposite direction to electron flow. That is all due to Benjamin Franklin's allocation. Um, but what if he had allocated it differently? Or even what if, when we were deciding which side of our magnet would point towards the geographic north, we were following maybe the ancient Egyptian model and drawing our maps with this part towards the top of the map and this part towards the bottom. And then all of a sudden, our picture of this entire definition would be completely different. The only reason these words are defined the way they are designed is through uh, choices made to set conventions so that we could all use a common language. But that common language is not, is not, is not that cat means positive and an means negative, and that cathode is because cations go towards it. Well, I suppose that is true. But it's not necessarily positive, uh, or negative, sorry, and that's not necessarily positive. Underline them. Not necessarily positive. Ah, one more time. Not necessarily negative, not necessarily positive. We got there. And that is the definition of, or the etymology, should I say, of cathode, cation, anode, and anion.